Um, and now, Beth, you were at Leno for years and now do a lot of award shows and you perform yourself, but yeah, sometimes? Oh. Um, when, oh, too many Beths. Too many Beths. Uh, <laughs> can't keep Best them German, straight. German, great stand up. Um, but you, at your time there, what, what did you enjoy most? What do you miss? Well, um, the exciting part of working on a, a daily show, other than having the grind every day, which can be stressful, it's waking up in the morning and seeing a news topic, and you've got somebody, for example, I start, when I first started out, Bill O'Reilly from Fox had really screwed up. He, he did some of these very dirty voicemails. And so then we went in that day and we did a bit on it. We just put it together so fast, and we got it on the air that night. And it got played the next day online, and you're just like, "Take that, you motherfucker!" <laughs> you know, it's just it's it's, it's exciting to um, be able to make fun of the world and make people laugh a little bit on a daily basis, and so fast and topical. And then the next day, though, you wake up again and have to start all over again. So it doesn't matter what you did yesterday; is now what are you going to do today? Here's what's going on. And uh, but it was just it was the excitement of um, having that instant connection with not just your host, which is important, and your fellow writers, but also people who are watching, because you, you watch the next day to, on the internet and you say, oh my gosh, they just played it on the Today Show, or they just played it, and it's, it's, it's fun. So that um, on a daily show like that, that's exciting. Again, mm. the grind is tough, but that's what's fun. Right, but the world is your story engine. Oh my yeah. gosh, yes. And um, you, you cruise all, all the things again and you hope that somebody really messes up. And if not, you've got your, your regular people you can always dip into again. <laughs> but, uh, and you can always apply it to what's going on now, but it's, uh, it's, it's very fun. Stressful, but fun. So, um, you know. And Rachel Axler was at The Daily Show for years and then moved out to California to write and is now writing for The New Girl, which is the Zoe Deschanel's sitcom. They, apparently, they only hire people who look like the lead <laughs> actress. <laughs> and <laughs> um, and uh, what, what do you miss about The Daily Show? Oh, that was not what I was prepared to answer. Well, um, no, what was your f most favorite part? I mean, I, mean, it, I, I, was, I was thinking, I was like, what was my favorite part of the day and what was my least favorite part of the day? And so, um, I mean, when I was there, and things, things do change in terms of the structure of the day, um, year to year there because John likes to switch it up I think a little but when I was there for most of the time you'd be on a piece um, from about 10 or 10 30 to 1230 when you had to hit print um, so my favorite part of the day was about 11 45 to noon when I felt like I was totally on a roll and I was like writing these jokes and it was making me laugh and I was even sort of like taking the time to like clarify things and look back at how I'd phrase something and make it even funnier and then my absolute least favorite part of the day was like 12.30 to 12.36 when I was pretending I was having printing problems. Um, and, and would have like the writer's assistant going like, um, yeah, we gotta, we gotta get this in. But, um, but yeah, that's the, that's the point at which you realize like you have nothing and you just have to print it. And, and then you, um, again, like what everyone was saying about writing on a, on a daily show, it's like, you sort of just zen out about it and you say tomorrow is a complete clean slate and tomorrow I'll get six jokes on the show. Um, so, um, it doesn't happen, but <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so now, and Larry Wilmore works uh, and produces and, and creates uh, his own shows, but is also a correspondent on The Daily Show. And my question is, um, now that Rachel's gone, what are they saying behind her back? <laughs> You, well, first of all, I'm the leader of what's being said. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch left work. <laughs> um, oh, but no, what is, so what is your experience? Because you... I won't tell go, you then. Oh. Uh, uh, what is my experience on the show? Yeah, I mean, um, you, you appear every couple of weeks? Yeah, it's, like, it's about once every six weeks, but through the magic of cable and reruns and the internet, it just feels like I'm on more than I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been on the show twice That's in five it? years. So. <laughs> <laughs> just the way it works. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was going to say, I actually started my career at Into the Night with Rick D's late night show on ABC, which was very challenging. That's not on your IMDb. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't even know what's on my IMDb. I didn't even mess it. But it's funny because he wasn't a comedian, so that was very challenging to write for a show like that because you have to write, like, these foolproof jokes that nobody can fuck up, right? <laughs> and you're like, how did he fuck that up? 
up again. You know, it's like, that's, a, that's an impossible joke to screw up. You know, so your every day was like that. You know. But, uh, but uh, the Daily Show is great because, uh, you know, I, I kind of like, um, as I'm getting closer to the date, we pretty much, I'll say, uh, yeah, I'll be in New York in a couple of weeks. So as I get closer, then my bro dark, you know, comes on and I think, all right, you know, what brother fucked up? You know, just like, you know. And, uh, you know, and so I start looking about, thinking about what's going on. Usually I'll pitch an idea and, or they'll pitch something. And, um, you know, like Rachel says, you start cooking it and <laughs> at a certain time it's got to go in and you got to do and, it. And you rehearse with John during the day. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, you know, it's funny. I actually auditioned on the air for the show, believe, believe it or not. Because when I met to do the show, I mean, John and I talked about sports, basically. I mean, there really wasn't much. And he was like, oh, yeah, this sounds like it could be a good thing. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, what happens next? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing I know, I'm writing a couple of bits. And he said, we'll try them out. Because since I lived in California, we were, they were going to tape one and show one later. you know. Uh, and, uh, and so we did it. And the dress rehearsal went horrible. I mean, it was terrible. And plus, I, I felt like I overwrote it because you have Colbert in your head and the people yeah. who really did it the best, the fake correspondent voice, and it wasn't really my voice. And so, you know, you feel like you're sweating and, and it looks like the crew doesn't even want to look at you. You know, like when, <laughs> yeah, like when people don't name their farm animals because they might have to eat them, you know, later. It's that kind of thing. No, we don't want to get too close to him. You know? oh. But then... <laughs> But John was so nice, and Rachel can attest to how nice John is. You know, afterwards we did this rewrite. <laughs> We're on tape. We're on tape, Rachel. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we uh, did a rewrite, and he, had, he said, Larry, just put it in your own voice. You know, and we kind of did it back and forth. And right before air, he just took my arm and said, Larry, just look in the camera and fucking give it to America. <laughs> and that was the nicest thing he could have said. He said that. You know, and it, you know, I got a big laugh from the first part, and then my stand-up comedian instincts take over. I'm like, all right, motherfuckers, I got you. No, no, no. <laughs> and now the crew's like, who's this guy? You know? So, that was my daily show experience. So, you know. so well, I want to talk about contact with hosts. So you, you work a lot with John, and, and Laura, you said you, you see Conan a couple of times. Yeah, about, I guess like, like an hour and a half a day we're with him. You know, we're, uh, we have one batch of jokes that's due, and then he gives us notes, um, and then we work on batch two, and then we go in after batch two and kind of figure out, uh, do we have enough of political, and do we need enough, you know, weirdo, you know, whatever yeah. stuff. We kind of meet with them that way, and then we do the final, final thing when he's getting ready for the show, so he's all... Now he's like Conan, and he's like you know being funny and stuff, and so that's that's one of his. Really yeah, I saw fun. the movie. He's not yeah, always he's, like that. Yeah, that's the, the movie Conan's the the guy. Yeah. And and Bethy, how often do you interact with Jay? Um, well, it's interesting because people always ask me. You know, it's much different than any place I've ever worked. In the fact that Jay sits in his office and he works on the monologue all day long. And then you just, if you have an idea, you come and you just drop it off to him. And he just goes, hey, how you doing? And you're like, good. And then he, Wait, Like you hand him you the... Hand it, yeah. yeah, he just sits in his chair all day long. And it's amazing. Like, and he's happy to see you and says hello. And you don't, like, tell him what the idea is. And then... Um, like an old man whittling or something on the porch? Or... Exactly. He's, exactly. He's not really whittling. I think he's, like, on the phone with his garage and, you know... <laughs> But he's really sweet, and then um, and then when we have like I have a piece that I'm shooting on Monday, so we went in and just told him, briefed him about it, and then he'll show up. He's totally professional. He shows up. We have him for about two hours, and then he wants to come back to the monologue. And um, he's a he's a professional, great guy to work for, and he's like no nonsense, and I really appreciate that. And you spent a lot of time with Dave while you were at Letterman, right? Oh yeah, it must have been God. How many minutes? <laughs> Maybe two. Really? Yeah, and I and I only met him. I, I was brought upstairs to for a, a meeting because uh, the writers uh, the writers and the and Dave are not on the same floor. Uh, so I was brought up to meet him because I was the girl writer. And when I came down, people who had been on the show for some time said, "What's he like?" <laughs> <laughs> I believe now you need. Um, to give a thumbprint to get access to his yeah. office. <laughs> Not the same. With, I mean, with, with Ellen, we see her several times a day, and, and she reads stuff, and, and she gives notes, and we, we go back and forth. Uh, Molly, as head writer, or co-head writer? Uh, co-head writer. Yes. That's important. Um, I assume you spend more time? Not with really. <laughs> we, um, 
we, we used to have a writer's meeting every morning where we'd all sit around for an hour and pitch our ideas. Then Jimmy said, you know, I'd like these in writing um, so I can read them and really see them in writing. And then we realized that he was just, re so we'd all sit around and go around the table and everyone would say their ideas. And you realize he's reading them and after 20 minutes, he's already decided what he likes. And you're only on the third of 10 writers saying things out loud. Mm -hmm. So Gary Greenberg, the other head writer, and I went to him and said, this meeting is pointless because you're reading these things. You've already made your mind. And we're just talking to talk. So we cut out the writer's meeting, which is, sounds kind of rare. We meet every Friday. We run a repeat on Friday, so we brainstorm on Fridays for bigger things. But um, the only time you see Jimmy is when you have a bit on the air. Everyone goes to rehearsal, but you see him when you have a bit on the air. So you bring your bit up to him, and you show it to him in his office. He gives you notes. He's incredibly involved uh, to ev I mean, every detail. It's ridiculous, kind of. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, it, it is like, it, he is, he, I, I mean, God bless him. Like, his name is on that marquee, so he takes that. That is his show, but he has complete control over everything to the point where you're like, he edits every bit with you. He tells you what people should be wearing, the font of the title card. I mean, he is the most involved. I don't know what it's like in other shows, but it is incredibly involved there. Uh, you bring your bit up. He gives you notes. You curse him because you think you have the best bit, and then he gives you that tiny little note that made it so much better, and you're annoyed. You're like, fuck <laughs> you. I could have done that myself. But um, yeah, he, it, we only, I mean, if you have a bit on, you see him, you know, six minutes of the day. And then sometimes after the show and stuff, we hang out, but he is sitting at his desk from 11 a.m. to, uh, we shoot from seven to eight, so. Yeah. Oh, that's different. and. Um, well, you guys, yeah, no. And um, so why don't we, no. <laughs> we, talk, we talk to them about it. <laughs> so look, I became, this is daunting to be up here because I became a writer because I dread public speaking. And, um, and there's this new trend, I, I attribute it to Tina Fey, where writers become performers. Um, I don't like this trend, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's happening and, and I'm learning to accept it.